Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. We're going to play a game today, everybody. But before we dive into that and tell you the rules, I want to invite everybody to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button and you will be notified whenever we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. When you see something in one of our videos that you want to add to your collection, the kayfabe effect means other people see it too. If it's a rare comic or hard to find, it may disappear quickly or the price might go up fast. So if you hit that subscribe and notification button, you'll be the first one on eBay, Amazon, your local comic shop, wherever you hunt back issues, you'll be the first in line to uh, go after that one. And let these videos play through to the end. That allows YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with other comics fans who haven't found cartoonist kayfabe yet. And that is how we grow this channel, 60,000 plus at this point, but we are aiming for 6 million. So thank you for your help on that. And uh, we still got a long way to go yet. We do. Is this a rights in? Yeah, rights in. That Luke. is a rights in. Okay. Yes. And so uh, the game that we're going to play today, the Cartoonist and Illustrator's Portfolio Volume 2, we're going to imagine that we're spending $2,000 on the original art that is for sale in this catalog. So we're going to flip through and have some fun looking at what the original art market looked like in the... Uh, 1978 is, is the publication date on this one, put out by Jim Stranko's Super Graphics. So there's comic strip art, comic book art, and some commercial art. And this is pretty cool. This is instructions on actually how to order this stuff and conditions and, and what you can expect from it. And then a little bit of an introduction where they talk about, you know, the history of collecting original art, which is still pretty new at this point. Stranko was a guy that, that got on board with that very uh, very early on. The other name that comes up is Joe Parent. That's not a name I'm familiar with, but has been marketing original art for years, um, operated galleries that sell some of this artwork, and makes note, Stranko does, that uh, prices have risen just recently from 15 to $50 in the last five years alone as uh, the, the prices are skyrocketing <laughs> on original art. I just loved it in, in uh, the first volume. Uh, it's like, Storenko's writing this shit. Right. Uh, Storenko's a highly successful artist, <laughs> designer, author who has been blah, blah, blah. In, the, in that previous volume, the, we played this game one video before. Uh, he, there, There's like a paragraph or something where it's like, Neil Adams, Barry Wintersmith, and Jim Storenko are some of the rarest uh, new artists on the scene because there's not that much in the market yet. Really pump, pumping up his... Price. Like, you have to be a smart mark to know that Super Graphics is Jim Steranko because his name isn't attached to it. And he's, who's, this introduction is written by a mystery man. But Steranko always gets a little salesmanship uh, in, in, the, in the pages. And it is fun to see, like, what he's pointing out is, like, you know, what makes stuff popular, covers or, or desirable pieces. Name some of his artists named this time. It does include Neil Adams again, um, Barry Smith. Jim Steranko, Jack Kirby, Joe Kubert, Frank Frazetta, Al Williamson, uh, newspaper strips, Hal Foster, Bern Hogarth, Milt Kniff, Alex Raymond, um, Windsor McKay. So there's a little bit of comics history, you know, as, as you get into this and some background. And um, I think that's probably enough of an intro. You know, if you want to follow along at home, you can see prices and, and info on the video. We'll be calling some of those out as we go through. And uh, then we'll pause and we'll put together our list and we'll come back and and see what we came up with. And if you're watching at home, you can play along with us. Starts off strong with a $300 Frank Rosetta page. Yeah, pretty nice, right? I'll, I'll be honest. I did my uh, list in preparation for this episode, and somehow I overlooked this. I think <laughs> I was reading the intro and not paying attention because this is not on my list. But man, 300 bucks for a Frank Frazetta? Yeah. I think we'd all take that. that. Yeah, that's a rock-solid investment right there. Al Cap and, and Lil Abner pages. And we've looked at a few of these in the uh, in the previous episode, but a Sunday page for ninety five dollars, and of course, Lil Abner, one of the most popular comic strips of all time. Have Have you looked into like like Al Cap? Because I just I just wonder if like he's you know if if that would have waned in recent years because it's kind of like maybe the generation that would care about that died out you know it's possible it, it it does make me wonder because there's also like a sweet spot of like art was just destroyed up to this point totally mm -hmm. not valued but at some point that switches and if you're a uh, if you have a daily syndicated comic you might end up with thousands of pages you know in a field where scarcity is a big part of maybe what's valuable and what isn't but i don't know the answer to that my pen started moving looking at these 25 dollars fearless fosdick strips <laughs> because i i am a fan of that uh, i got hold of like uh, the two kitchen sink volumes 
when I was a kid because I was a big Dick Tracy fan whenever uh, the movie came out and my pops hipped me to that strip. So my pen's moving. I'm not going to commit yet, but I'm coming <laughs> back to page seven. I love this open panel. You know, we, we, we've got our uh, guy, I don't know, <laughs> guillotine ready. <laughs> and there's an open panel where it's just the head popping through that, that opening. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. He was a big user of uh, assistance and things, and I think mm-hmm. at a certain point he wasn't drawing shit. It's it's neat what they call out. So like this daily strip, um, one of the assistants, Frank Frazetta. Yeah. And so like here he's like you can see the women, the influence of Frank Frazetta and the women in this particular strip. So uh, one of yeah his might be a way to assistants. might be a way to pick up some Frazetta originals there. Um, so for uh, Lil Abner there at the top, but our next one is a is a Basil Wolverton strip. Woozy Woofer, daily strip number 10. And I think that may indicate that it wasn't sold. You know, it's not mm-hmm. dated. Like a lot of these will have the date, Mutt and Jeff, um, August 25th, 1928 so cool. as, as comparison. So uh, yeah, Basil Wolverton pitching a, a strip there for $35 for that daily. Mutt and Jeff, $200 for a daily, 1928, one of the older pieces that you'll see in here. I'll make a note of the Cliff Stare at Polly and her pals. Uh, Sunday strip, man, for the 950. It's f- pretty steep. It is, but man, 28 by 36 inches. G- like, yeah. Huge. I've, I've, I've seen these original Sundays uh, that would be that scale, and it's just, it's, it's a massive. I always feel like this is one of those strips that a lot of people, people who love comics art, will point at this strip. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, like the Kurtzmans and stuff. Yeah. Like, it would come up as an influence. Yeah, it looks like crumb. Yeah. We got some Stan Drake or one Sherlock of those guys. Holmes, Frank Giacoa. Oh, cool. So a guy that I know is inking, you know, Kirby in, yeah. in uh, 60s Marvel or something, but 1956 working on a Sherlock Holmes strip. Looks like Peter Cushing was a bit of the uh, Yeah, I wonder if it's model. a movie adaptation. Yeah, really. I mean, it's it's very pretty art. He's using that style. You know, the Stan Drake, Alex Raymond. Al and by Williamson. the way, d- daily strips, 25 bucks a pop on those, too. Yeah, not bad. 75 for a Sunday. Oh, shit. Okay. We're getting into Hal Foster uh, territory. Uh, Burn Hogarth. Burn Hogarth. Okay. Oh, really? He's yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can see the same style, though, with the word balloons and everything there. That's a Sunday page. Tarzan, 595. And that's another big one. 19 and a half by 26 and a half inches. Kind of steep. Yeah, kind of. But four Sunday pages, and they range in price from 595 to 625. And they kind of talk about some of the highlights on them underwater. He's fighting like an octopus there. Yeah, it's weird Tarzan in like uh, scuba gear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he he used to go to space. Too. He he is he is a lord or something, right? Lord Greystoke. That's it. Broomhilda Sunday pages and uh, seventy five dollars for a Sunday page of that. But Pogo Walt Kelly Sunday page um, nine hundred dollars. Walt Kelly, a uh, certainly a revered comic strip artist. I don't know Mammy. Are you familiar with Mammy? Have you heard of that? No. Russell Patterson. I think it looks nice, but not not a strip that I'm familiar with. Yeah, some of this stuff I think is just like stuff that Steranko jerks off to. Yeah, you wonder what he picks up because it is nice drawing and it's almost like a fashion fashion illustration or something on display there. One seventy five for that. Etiquette, Smiling Jack, another Polly and her pals. Yeah, cheaper. Yeah, two hundred dollars for this one. But you can see it's that smaller size, too. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you could be modest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it might look nice against the couch. Alley Oop, VT Hamlin. You know, I really like that comic. I don't think it gets enough good, like, reprints or anything. But just, like, the the uh, the build of the characters. and It's, it's so, yeah. so one-of-a-kind. It does look it does look cool. I agree with that. And uh, Ed, you could add a Sunday page for 135 I heard uh, people talk about the Alley Oop phase of 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 time and like i always wonder i mean it has to be a reference to the comic strip right i mean they're talking about prehistoric yeah Yeah, right but but it feels like only comic people would know what that means if you talk about the Mm alley-oop phase when was the flintstones when did that come on yeah that's a good question because this is this is 1969 yeah i mean flintstones was before that i'd say flintstones probably like 1960 well the the daily strip here 1937 on the dailies so i mean a strip that would have preceded it and probably had a big influence Mm -hmm. get some harriman's Couple of Harriman daily strips. Those are two fifty a pop. Really cool. I was looking at this one as is a great one. Day after day, week after week, year after year, cop after mouse. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that a lot. Play with his language and, and pretty succinct. Popeye by Bella Zabula. Zabuli. Yeah. 
put a, a Sunday um, Popeye there for one seventy five. Give me Seagar or Bobby London. Joan of Arc Wally Wood. We looked at Whoa, one of those Wally Wood monographs, and it had that in there. Um, twenty by twenty eight inches. That's a stunning piece. Only two seventy five. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I mean there's a lot yeah, of ink on that page. That is, that's a good looking Wally Wood. Yeah, like I mean, that's definitely going to get. But I, I can't see how something will supersede that. Casey Ruggles, uh, 165, Sunday page. Mandrake the Magician, Lee Falk, and Phil Davis, 250. I use it for toilet paper. <laughs> there are, there are uh, on my list. international fans probably out there right now just cussing us yeah. for not paying the proper respect. Oh, is that Joe Kubert? The Green Beret? Some yeah. fandom dailies. Uh, Windsor McCoy, 1958. So not Lee Falk uh, phantoms. Right. How much up for that Green Beret joint? Green Beret is only 25 bucks. You cool. know what, though, man? It's, it. it's not a great strip. I love the Joe Kubert part, but, um, man, I wish it was a different strip. Sure. Although I do kind of like the, the signs. I like that lettering in there. And there's a silhouette car. The, the background drawings are real good on it. How much for that one? Twenty-five. Big Ben Bolt by John Colin Murphy. I have a book that I think is written by John Colin Murphy's son, who is a writer. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's all about like that Connecticut town where all, yeah. everybody mm-hmm. that lives there is pretty much a, uh, a syndicated cartoonist. Terry and the Pirates, but uh, George Wonder. Yeah, I'm a Wonder fan. 75 for a Sunday. Oh, man, that's a no-brainer. Some nice stuff in there. It's weird, too, looking at this stuff, having the advantage of, like, we have artist editions. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so, like, seeing this stuff reprinted here is, is definitely funny. Red Rider. Red yeah. Rider, the, the BB gun uh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. influence, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think there was some of that in the original. I have one of those comics. Uh, they're, they're, they're like things, just like a weird comic you'll find popping up at different places because it's, I think, like dealers and stuff, they're like, they don't know what to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Fred Harmon. I, I think no. it was a pretty popular book. I, I bet it was. Yeah. Little Beaver, man. That was uh, uh, one of the wrestlers in uh, WrestleMania 3 <laughs> in right. the King Kong Bundy versus Hillbilly Jim match. Floyd Godfordson, Mickey Mouse. And there's no Mickey in this strip, but uh, what the hell, man? 200 bucks for Floyd Godfordson here's, on a Sunday. Here's the thing. I love his, I love his, his strips. Like, like, I get the Fantagraphics ones. Yep. My last uh, it, Fantagraphics volume that, that I purchased has the Mickey with these eyes. I like the polka dot eyes Mickey mm. and that era of his cartooning. So this is too late for me. I, 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 I don't want it. This is like the yellow oval around Batman symbol. Exactly. <laughs> A lot of comic strip stuff in this in this issue. We're almost at the uh, the centerfold. Yeah, all Blondie stuff, uh, Sunday page, as well as um, some dailies there. So, Blondie, talk about like popular five fifty for the Blondie Sunday page. Yeah, I believe it. Speaking to uh, to that success, Smitty and Herbie. I don't know. I, I I don't know this strip, but I like how it looks a lot, and that's one fifty for uh, the Sunday page there. Burnt yeah, I like the lettering on this. Your the uh, cartoonist. All right, magazine and book illustrations. His name is Savage 3 cover. Wow. Who, so, who, there was never even an issue two. Yeah, right. It's huh. very confusing, but this is Bob Foster doing the cover, and man, that thing looks cool. Yeah, because yes. we know that guy. You mm-hmm. know, like Rich Buckler did not, did not create Deathlock. <laughs> Deathlock was created by Gil Kane, and, and um, his name is Savage. So pretty big, 23 by 35, so 2 by 3 feet, and uh, full color, I think, oil painting. For four hundred dollars, Bob Foster's your artist on that. Got some more of this stuff. We had some of this imagery. Yeah, one that I will point out is Robert McGinnis doing this. This one, the um, I think that is considered a rough poster design. Oh wait, yeah, this is a, a tightly designed rough. So not wow. quite the final, but almost. And uh, Robert McGinnis, one of the like, you know, you can find his monograph and stuff for his paperback book. $750 for that. Those are pretty cool. And you can see Steranko, of course, is going to love all this James yeah. Bond kind of uh, cool spy stuff. Some Earl Norums doing nice. uh, Masters of Kung Fu or Deadly Hands of Kung Fu covers. So a few of those, $175 to $200 for those. There's no artist credited here, but they're Tarzan covers. And they're uh, $200 each, except for this one's $150. i am not sure who the artist is on those. These are, I mean, they got to suffer from the black and white treatment. Yeah. Kind of a bummer here. Um, some pa- more paperback covers. This one I will note, Larry Todd and Von Baudet. Oh, that's mm. cool. It doesn't say what it's for, just a magazine cover in full color, 12 by 16 inches, 175. This is creepy eight cover full painting by Gray Morrow, uh, 125. Morrow, Gray Morrow. 
Uh, a couple of more cover illustrations, not not stuff that I recognize there. I'm, Iron Man paperback. I'm saving my funds for uh, for the comics. It's it's seeming like. All right, man, check this one out. That's cool. Howard Shake and portfolio and all of the plates. So you can get the entire set for seventeen fifty, or each plate is three hundred dollars each. And one of the notes here: this is uh, done with flare pens and magic markers. That makes sense to me, man. Like he's got that speedy ink style. Makes me wish, like, this is another one I wish we could see in, like, four-color reproduction, yeah. what these things look like with the, with uh, markers. Interesting. And th telling something of a story. It's not just a series of unrelated images. Man, Chaikin's one of those guys, like, when I see stuff like this, it just adds, like, this whole other chapters to Chaikin's legacy in yeah. my mind, you know, because this is, I never saw this before. Absolutely. Uh, but it's really accomplished and great looking, but it's it's a different Chaikin. Yeah, once again, man, uh, shouts to Brandon Graham who sent us that, uh, that Howard Chaikin artwork from role-playing games with duotone board and stuff, and just characters with big-ass guns. Duotone board is uh, timely here, Ed, because we're going to see some of that as uh, we get into some of this Jack Davis stuff. This is a Get Smart TV advertising illustration. I'm a, I'm a big $450, son. and um, man, his pen work and line work and brush stuff is just blows my mind. This is supposedly full color. It's an early TV illustration doesn't list where it, where it's going but 125 dollars i think early tv might be where it, where it showed up some or is that tv guide or something yeah something like that it's so hard to tell there's so many outlets for illustration back in the day daniel boone again we're continuing with jack davis this line work it's phenomenal and it's wild to me like how he gets shapes but then it'll just be all this fine crossing cross hatching and then yeah. like some big heavy brush lines I, I thought this was Dick Van Dyke in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but it's right. Jerry Van Dyke in My Mother the Car. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I might have to go for that one. Because, like, they're all beautiful drawings, but I, yeah. I like a little action. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's I think, the duo, tent, duo tone 350. board. Davis is expensive. Yeah, and why not? I mean, man, that's just phenomenal. So some uh, these are preliminary cover studies. I think these are all in color. The noteworthy one for me is Steranko doing a pencil study, and he says that's that's these are for paperback covers. But the uh, pencil study is basically for values here, and it's seventy five dollars, eight and a half by eleven. Pretty sweet piece. Barry, how how much for that? Uh, seventy five. Barry Smith, one pager from Esquire magazine, and this is full color too. 850, 12 by 18 inches. Oh, you're spending money on that. Mm -hmm. Esquire hiring him for that. He Bill was doing, Ward. He was doing like record covers and stuff. Like he, he was, you know, in, in that other world. Yeah, I think all those dudes that were at that upper echelon probably talking to each other and like, oh yeah, the money's better. Do a paperback cover. Mm -hmm. Get one of these magazines to buy a comic from you. Bill Ward, known for his uh, drawings of, of sexy women, and I have some books of his drawings. Torchy. Very tempting for this uh, price guide. Pencils on tracing paper, 13 by 20 inches, but you can see it's very tight, and you can also see like the famous characters, like Golden Age uh, women characters there. What's the price on that one? 125 for that. Oh, that's nothing. And this is charcoal on sketch paper. This one on the left. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Because like the book I have, I think it's washes and things of that sort. You know, it's not, not just pen and ink. Or line work. Dan Adkins unpublished Conan pencil drawing, seventy bucks. How Foster, uh, one panel removed from um, Prince Valiant, but sixteen by eleven inches, which is kind of cool. And it's a it's a neat yeah. panel of like those jousting knights. Yeah. If, if you've seen, one, seen those one fifty, if you've seen those Hal Foster originals, it's like just like a series of posters, you know. Yeah, and they're all pasted up, mm -hmm. and it's you, uh, right, you can't exactly. draw on that big ass thing. Yeah. The commentary is you get a deal on this because it's a page that's been cut down, uh -huh. but it's still this nice piece. So yeah. this Basil piece, I Basil think Wolverton, I would scoop that up. End of the world, twelve by fourteen inches, seventy five dollars. <laughs> all these ones that are under a hundred, it's like yeah, why not? Yeah, you can spend a lot on them. Larry Todd, underground artist, nice. More of that weird duck shit. Oh, there was some duck shit. Yeah, duck that. was in the air. <laughs> this yeah. is like Dell covers. This is George Chastain doing the same cover. dude. Yeah, same dude. Reminds me of uh, Dan and Larry, the the yeah. uh, the Dave Cooper style, at least of that head. Yeah, I don't know if that's the same artist on these or not. They're not credited, but um, you know, they're covers for for to like rock pulpy or kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Phantom, to rock, to rock yeah. and Ben Bull. Comic art. Here we go, man. Gunsmoke Western cover. John Severn, 125. Nice. Battle action. Russ Heath. 
75 Yeah, I'm going for that. $75 now. for a Russ Heath cover. Same with uh, Astonishing number 19 cover is also Russ Heath here. It's only $55. Why the Moon, Reed Crandall, $50. Oh, yeah. And Thunder Agents, page three. Pencils Ooh. and inks, Wally Wood, 12 by 18 inches, 20 bucks. <laughs> for one page? One page. Oh, yeah, it looks like No Man. Getting into the Neil Adams section Sick. here, man. 77 DC calendar cover, Neil Adams. It's $900, but you're getting all those DC characters. Yeah, Look at how, the, uh, how this is handled. Inverted. Yeah, uh, like pasted on or pasted something, it up, right? Yeah. You know, you weird. do that on the Xerox and then... Yeah, pretty pretty sweet piece, though, no doubt about that. I don't see... Oh, 20 by 18 inches, so it's even a big piece. Like, that. that's a wall, yeah. a wall mm -hmm. piece uh, with no windows in the room, though. Don't want to expose that one to the sun. Action Comics 374 cover by Neil Adams. So Superman cover, 250 bucks. And the next page is the Marvel Comics Index Volume 3. It's the Avengers. It's full color. It's painted by Neil Adams. It's $1,000, 11 by 15 inches. How cool is that? I can't be spending half my money on uh -huh. that, though. What would that be worth now? Um, this green arrow is kind of neat. It's a stamp. You know how they would do the little stamps? And this is almost actual size. The original is five and a half by five and a half, so they note that it's almost actual size for 125 And a Power Records album, that's your Batman uh, piece up here, $600, 19 and a half by 14 So another big piece and a, kind of a money shot if you're going for Neil Adams. Get that, get that Batman. These are all Star Wars pages from issues four and five. So 10 by 15 inches, Howard Chaikin, Steve Leola uh, uh, on the inks, and several of these pages, they're all $150 each. What do you think these things are worth? Now? Yeah, I know. Like I think original I Star Wars maybe art? spend everything just on like these two. I was going through and trying spread. to figure that out. Like, are we, are, are these investments, am I flipping these right, in 2022? Yeah. <laughs> because, man, you're going to get a return on your on your dollar for those. Oh, I'm such a Kirby mark. Yeah. Look at this dude, Krusty Bunker's inking on some of those. Over Chaken. So this is Sword and Sorcery issue one. Again, 10 by 15, 75 bucks a pop. And uh, the Krusty Bunker's inkers on these pages is mostly Neil Adams, Dick Giordano, and Alan Weiss. So it's kind of a... Uh, Kind of cool, kind of cool piece. Kirby pencils. Red Skull and Orion, this is the same piece of paper, my understanding is front and back, is what you're looking oh, at okay. there. So $45 for that, but you're getting two drawings. Bullseye, um, kind of a cool pose here. These are 11 by 14 inches, $65. Beautiful Dreamer, yeah. $35. It's so, feels so arbitrary, right? It's like, it's a pencil drawing by Kirby. Like, shouldn't they all be kind of the same? Daredevil and Crime Buster, Charles Biro. Yeah, seventy five bucks. It's historically interesting. Yeah, definitely. All are right, we, man. are we getting into full stories here? Rich Buckler. Um, I don't know if we have full stories yet, but Rich Buckler doing uh, Kiss comics. I feel like that's a pretty good page if you're going to buy a Kiss comic. Okay. I like how the way they look in this panel, but also like a splash of the whole group. Uh, that's seventy five dollars. Um, most of these are seventy five. I think this this cover is only sixty. And Dan, that's Buckler. Dan Atkins on this cover. I was going to say. Look the Everett ish. This one surprises me. So Frank Brunner doing Giant Size Man Thing, issue five, some different pages. Uh Howard the Duck, two seventy five, two sixty five. Like think of we saw Wally Wood for twenty bucks. Yeah. So I don't know if that speaks to Howard the Duck. Howard is hot, and this is like a very early Howard. Maybe like the first full issue. They're, they're good. Maybe that's it. That, that's probably it. But man, I love these page layouts. I thought were really strong. Here's another Howard the Duck. This is the Treasury Val Merrick, uh, seventy dollars. The the art size on this nine by twelve and a half. Oh, smaller than the normal. And Marvel team up cover Gil Kane. We're gonna see a bunch of Gil Kane coming up. Forty five dollars. That character's a paste up. Mm. The background pretty Zandu cool. figure. Yeah, it's weird, like, the notes of what's on here. Like, some mm -hmm. of them are, like, lots of these word balloons, but they can be removed. Yeah. Who's removing this stuff? Gil Kane and John Romita on this cover, $45. Gil Kane, John Romita, Spider-Man cover, $45. That's ridiculous. This Hulk one is speaking to me. Yeah, Rich Buckler, 50 bucks for your Hulk cover. Um, trying to think of standouts. Most of these are Gil Kane. Gil Kane, Gil Kane. <laughs> So I'm sure that Gil Kane must have given him a pile of artwork for this stuff. Rich Buckler on this in Humans covers forty five dollars. I am. Uh, I might have money left over after <laughs> this catalog, actually, dude. Gil Kane X Men cover thirty five. Yeah, that's a reprint issue. Yeah, but man, it's a cover. Yeah. 
I feel like an X-Men cover for 35 bucks. Yeah. You don't have to tell me anything else. That's, that's going to be a good return on the investment there. Um, more Gil Kane. Avengers 127. I thought this was a really pretty cover. Gil Kane, $45. But, man, that the heroes look good there. Thor just racing out after you. Avengers 45 cover. John Buscema and double size, 13 by 20 $75. A lot of these uh, Bronze Age guys, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me that right. much. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I think I'm going to be spending a lot of my money on comic strips. Well, that's good. You know, mix it up from catalog to catalog. This Black Panther from Jungle Action, that's a Gil Kane cover there. And uh, again, like, I think that's a really good looking cover for 45 bucks. Klaus Janssen touches this one over Gil Kane. And this is kind of cool because that Panther is a reverse. It's a photo stat, yeah. but it's the, the reverse photo stat. So if you got hold of that, you'd have some different stuff hanging out there. Not Brand X. Is that Marie cover. Severn? Marie Severn, $45. Buy that. What, what's the page 64? 45 bucks? 45 Incredible Hulk cover with Herb Trimpy pencils and John Severn inks, 50 bucks. I'm a fan. Yeah, definitely. And here's, I think, the only complete story. Amazing Spider-Man 166, complete 18-page story. Ross Andrew and Mike Esposito. Entire story available for $175. <laughs> so just under 10 bucks a page. Mm-hmm. You can also buy individual pages for 15 bucks, except the splash. That one will set you back 20 <laughs> These prices, man, they kill me. Yes, for sure. Uh, Brave and Bold, Rick Buckler doing a Batman cover here. Superman versus Wonder Woman. We we brought this up, I think, whenever we talked to Jeff Darrow recently. So Jose Ho- Jose Luis Garcia Lopez um, doing that image for fifty bucks. And so that does exist. That did yeah. get printed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is another one of those. I just think this cover looks really good. It's Gil Kane doing Captain America for Marvel Double Feature, forty five dollars. But all these covers are basically like fifty bucks for for covers. Just wild to me. Um, this is a cream cover that John Romita does. So, you know, Cream Magazine, $75. This is Rick Buckler doing pencils that weren't used for a Marvel grab bag holiday special, uh, $55 but tight pencils. Gil Kane and John Romita Jr. doing Spider-Man. I don't know what this is. I think it was like a tryout or something, but $45. And that's just a beautiful image in my mind. Son of Origins. So John Romita painted this. We mm-hmm. looked at Son of Origins on a past video, and it was a painting by John Romita. This is the line art version of it, $30. Gray Morrow doing a dual title page illustration, $45. Everybody's buying that Son of Origins piece. I'll be yeah. shocked if I don't see you guys yes. scooping that one up. And then these are done for um, an English line of Marvel reprint comics, most are penciled by Larry Lieber. There are 15 of these in all, and they all have like a logo running down the side of them, which is kind of cool, but cut off for uh, space here. 25 bucks each. Nine pence cover price. So this is, in my mind, you look at these and go, well, I like this image or that image. Exactly. That's a lot of that stuff. Who, who, who's drawing these? Larry Lieber. Ah. Uh, come on. Yeah. And <laughs> Western Man by Robert Crumb. Yeah, I'm buying it. And listen to this part, man. Panels were all drawn separately and pasted into this format for publication. That's pretty wild because yeah. I mean it's it's seven and a half by thirteen and a half, which means two and a half by two and a half for these little square panels that he drew separately. Two hundred fifty bucks for all of it. What's frustrating to me is I've never seen this strip before, and the series is called Complete Chrome Comics. It's like how mm-hmm. much do do we not get? Yeah, very true. Silly Symphonies six cover painting from a Dell comic four hundred dollars. So that's it. That's your run. We will take a uh, take a, a brief recess, put together our list, and uh, I encourage you to do the same at home, and we'll come back and see what we've come up with. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. If you want to support Cartoonist Kayfabe, pick up our comic books. Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness is my latest comic. It's in comic shops everywhere right now. A retelling of the 60-year history of The Incredible Hulk, featuring me as writer artist, colorist, letter. This is my version of the Hulk paying homage to some of the great cartoonists that have come before me. Pick this up wherever you buy comics. Red Room Trigger Warnings, now available in comic shops everywhere. Banned in 23 countries and 11 comic shops. 
but even those comic shops that ban it can pick it up for you. You can pre-order or maybe able to pull it out from underneath the counter. Murder on the Dark Web for fun and profit. This is the second season, but every issue is self-contained. So whichever one you come across, pick it up. It's the perfect, complete story in each issue. And the Antisocial Network is a collection of the first season of Red Room. Again, available wherever you pick up your comics. Jimmy, can we look at that backdrop before we get out of here? All right, we're done paying the bills, man. Uh, let's get back to the video. All right, man. Yes, we are back. Everybody has their list compiled. One thing we didn't say, this cover, the Bernie Wrightson piece, it's a 20 by 20 inch painting. This is, I think, a detail of it. That is $1,800. And I think it's Tim Conrad is our back cover, and that is uh, $1,500. So I don't know that that's changing anybody's list here, but just to uh, be complete here. It, it is interesting that this round, uh, the way we played the game before, there were Windsor McKay pieces, and there were other strips that that, that superseded there was Barry Windsor Smith stuff that was more expensive than the 2000 we had. Uh, in this book, there's nothing that's too expensive. Like we can, we can get anything. Uh, I think Jimmy, that it is proper decorum. When you have a guest in the house, they could go first, man. Well, you know what? I figured maybe we'll go through it and just check it off. If it's one that's on your list. No, if you say so. It might be the easiest way to, uh, to kind of figure this stuff out. And I have to do my mea culpa is, I just overlooked this Frank Frazetta whenever I was going through. Like I said, I was reading the intro and not really paying attention. It's a good looking, a really good looking strip, and I don't have that on my list for three hundred dollars. I'm grabbing it. I um, had that from like the very beginning, but had to get rid of it. No. Oh wow, in, interesting. In the shuffle, yeah. Man, Ed, you you won that page then by far. So just stop me as we go. If you see something that uh, is on your list, I spent two thousand. So so I spent the exact amount and came away with about a good dozen pieces this is my first purchase the basil wolverton daily strip for uh 35 dollars man i like i like it you've got a couple of weird characters so i'm on board i have the other wolverton piece on my on my list the the comic page we're gonna you know jimmy i feel like we should just sit, sort of say our stuff because like okay. I'm, I'm, like my pages are out yeah, of order totally. uh, for what right. i'm buying and things but if i guess just keep going and like maybe because like for the visual interest. i have a uh I have two. I have a crazy cat. Hold up. Do I have a crazy cat? I think you added a crazy cat. Yeah, I have. Right. I have a crazy. cat. Which one did you pick? Uh, Same you know, price. It could be dealer's choice, man. Like they're both. They're both kind of cool. I'll go for the top one. What the fuck? The top one has everybody because you get Office of Puff, uh, Ignatz, and Crazy. I'm grabbing an Alley Oop daily also because I needed. I had thirty five bucks left over, and I figured I'm spending it. Yes. You know, and uh, these either dealer's choice on those again. I think. Yeah, I would take this top one because I love like all the comic book language stuff flying out of the cave at him. There's little starbursts and things like that. Yeah, I feel like that strip is known for that kind of stuff. Is anything in here five dollars? Because I had five dollars. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> five you can, dollars. You can buy. You can buy an option. You can buy like a a, a a piece of stock in. Now everybody got the Wally Wood, right? I did. Yeah. I meant to, but I just couldn't make the map. You know. Uh... Yeah, what's me, what's the price on that one? Two seventy five. Yeah. Tom, you played the game wrong. If yeah. you left here without the Frazetta or the Wally Wood, <laughs> <laughs> I got a Wally Wood. But I didn't. I, I yeah, I couldn't make the math work on that one. I, th I think I think I'm gonna make a prediction that Tom is going for like fun superhero images with titles and stuff. Man, I think I think he's well, he's wait, buying rich wait bucklers. And see. <laughs> you probably grabbed the Joe Kubert ad. Uh, you know what? I I forego the Joe Kubert. I, yeah, I looked at it long and hard, and like I said, it, it, I just don't love it, mm -hmm. that particular pay strip, unfortunately, but, uh, man, 20, 25 bucks for a uh, Joe Kubert's hard to pass up. I don't know if we pass it up, but I, I'm getting that Hell Foster panel for 150 Oh, yeah, I have that on my list as well. Did we pass it? See, that's why I think we should just do our lists. Yeah, maybe it, we should. It, it might be coming up. No, we're past it. Did anybody pick up the uh, His Name is Savage 3 cover? No. no. I, it was... Tom, go through your list, Okay, man. so I got the Hal Foster. I got uh, the Basil Wolverton. I got Gunsmoke Western. But you went for the Basil Wolverton comic page, which is also what I did. Yeah. I got uh, the Russ Heath battle cover. I got uh, the Steranko drawing. I got the Wallywood Thunder Agents page. And then here's where I sunk... A lot of my money. I bought all the Star Wars pages, so that was like nine pages at one hundred fifty dollars each. So that was like thirteen fifty. That was my big chunk. I got all the Kirby drawings. 
uh, I got the Son of Origins. Yeah, if we all didn't get that, man, we and then play the um, game right either. There, uh, and then I'm not. I, I, some Gilcane. I think something. I got this Gilcane thing too. Here's what I scooped up, Jimmy. Uh, I got the Frazetta. I got the Wally Wood. I got the Son of Origins. I got the Hal Foster. You know I'm a crumb dude. Got that. Got that uh, crumb strip for two fifty. Got the Steranko pencil drawing. The Wolverton uh, comic page, not the comic strip. Right. Uh, I got the Red Skull and Orion, and I got the Bullseye. I left the Beautiful Dreamer to uh, Tom. He can, <laughs> he can purchase that one uh, for no reason other than like two Kirby's is, is is plenty. Went for a Jack Davis Get Smart page for uh, four hundred fifty. That that was a big chunk of my yeah uh, my loot, my biggest purchase. Uh, it's just a really really cool image. Uh, I got a Crazy Cat Daily and that Alley Oop Daily. Yeah, this is the piece that I bought. That, that's like the biggest. So, Jimmy, what's you had the most time with the with the catalog, yeah. so you could have yeah. taken your time. And I, I got some of the ones that you mentioned. You know, like I, I grabbed some of the Kirby drawings, of course. I don't think you could pass those up. Well, which ones? You you said some, but not all. I bought these two. But not Beautiful Dreamer. Not Beautiful okay. Dreamer. That one's still I for thought you. this is a back in... It is, it is. It's one for $45, I, I but see. it's two okay. drawings. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see. I grabbed that, and you know what? I All of this stuff I look at and go, you buy all the Kirbys. Yeah. You know, I didn't, but but of course you should. Yeah. I bought the Neil Adams. It's a Neil Adams Superman cover. Like, that just feels like, yeah, put put that on the uh, in, in your pile of collections there. Um, I bought a lot of the same stuff that you guys mentioned. One difference was that 18-page Spider-Man story. You did grab that? I did. I had to. 175 oh, yeah. bucks is pretty cheap. And it's like, I love the, the, the sequential pages. So, like, to get a complete story, like, I'm going to go for that. I'm I bought a, tons I'm, of these covers. I'm not a Ross Andrew dude. Yeah, I don't care who did it. Like, I would have yeah, bought it with somebody I never Spider-Man, even heard of, probably. Yeah. But, like, I, I went for, you know, Gil Kane, John Romita... Uh, X Men cover had to do that. That's that's the one. I that was the Gil Kane one that I couldn't identify. Was that X Men cover? Um, Black Panther. I like this cover. I like the Avengers. John Buscema on an Avengers cover. I was you looking know, I at that. Yeah, that, that was in my short list. Yeah, I was looking at that. The one. Captain America, Gil Kane, the uh, Herb Trimpey, John Severin, Hulk. That was on my, sh- um, my short. Marie Severin cover. You know, so a lot of these are just like I was looking at these covers, that, and it's like I like this artist. That makes sense, you know. Like and for fifty bucks, essentially, like I, I grabbed most of those. You're to the typography, and like that—that that feels like Jim, Jim Rugg purchases. Yeah, definitely. Um, I too got the Robert Crumb. Piece. Yes, yeah. that seemed just way too cool to pass up. And a couple of those covers that you called out, Tom, mm-hmm. like the um, the John Severin and the Russ Heath couple of mm-hmm. those i grabbed you get the son of origins of course yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the son of origins you don't leave without that i was thinking about like all this stuff i'm as excited by that as almost anything in here like yeah. that's totally. really a cool piece totally i i think because maybe they were printed so small or maybe you guys aren't as into star wars but like all those star wars pages i was i'm really excited about that you know the other thing is like what are we buying these for like if it were wonder what what's say? worth the most like what a what a deal for all these but sure. i'm not into star wars yeah see like know? i'm way into this stuff and if it comes down to it, I can retire on it. You know? Yeah, like like that's like I made purchases for, like from the heart rather yeah, than me too, for yeah. for uh, financial motivation or flipping or whatever. I just grabbed yeah. stuff I liked a lot. I grabbed the Hal Foster. I think that was one that all three of us mm-hmm. went for. Pretty cool. One of the ones I picked up that no one else had was the creepy cover, Gray Morrow. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's creepy and worn. It's a color painting, 125 bucks, and it was towards the end of my list where it's like, you know, I probably had 150 bucks to to play with, and it just felt like, yeah, I bet you that would look cool as hell on the wall. Did we all grab the Wally Wood, Joan of War? I you, didn't, you but I, like if I had it to do over again, I'd maybe move some stuff around to get that. I would probably move some stuff to get that. You didn't uh, get it? I did get that one, oh, but okay. to get the Frazetta in the front, that's one uh, that I Yeah, the Frazetta, I'm, I'm okay with passing that. It didn't, like you're talking about love, it didn't speak to me. Like, it would be cool to own a Frazetta, but that particular piece just didn't do it for I me. I really like that John Severin cover. Like, growing up yeah, uh, I bought that in one. a house where there I were a lot of one. cowboys on the TV, that uh, one seemed really cool. Well, you know, I love it. That comic, it was called, like, The Black Rider or something, and then Gunsmoke comes on TV, and it's like, let's change the name of our comic to Gunsmoke. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing that uh, I, I might do differently would be, like, spring for something like this. Yeah. Man, I love that Wonder Woman drawing. And, I mean, like, that's a big piece. If I was investment-minded, like, like I would scoop that up probably over every... Like, that's a that's a six-figure page. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Adams drawing, like, a bunch of the A-list superheroes. Oh, man, it's everything. Yeah. You know, it's a who's who for that. And it, 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 it works on a lot of levels, but it just wasn't speaking to me. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. 
Yeah, I ended up piecemealing everything out, but, uh, right. you know, like the last time we did this, it's just, you can go in so many directions, yeah. you know, like, like I could probably go through this again with $2,000, scratch off everything I picked up and still be able to spend that uh, pretty easily. So. You're going you're gonna to be happy. Uh, th- we have one more volume of this catalog to, to play the game, and I look forward to that. Uh, the, the, highlight, the only piece that I remember in there is the Super Friends Treasury Edition cover, Alex Toth. I think oh, wow. it's 80 bucks. Yeah. 60 or $80, man. So, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that catalog. But the way this game works, it's not just the three of us playing. We have 61,000 subscribers out there. And I need to hear what everybody else is scooping up uh, in the comments uh, below this video. It's really fun, like, like to me, seeing this stuff and seeing where this is at in the late 70s. In the intro, Stranko talks about like he's been buying original art for a decade before this. It's incredible to think of the people who got on board with that stuff. Because, like, when I first started going to comic book shows, you would see, like, comic book dealers would have, like, three or four pages. Who knows how they got them? Yeah. Very random. But they'd just be sitting there and they'd be 30 bucks or, you know, kind of random. But, I mean, I think that's how it was in the early days for seeing collectors of original art at these early shows and stuff. So it's a neat snapshot mm-hmm. absolutely yeah. super fun to play probably the nerdiest kind of videos that we make <laughs> but that's what the channel's about you guys good to go yeah, yeah. Kay Fabers, like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available what's out there jimmy hulk grand design monster and hulk grand design madness my retelling of the 60 year history of the incredible hulk paying homage to a lot of my favorite cartoonists along the way you can pick that up now wherever you buy comic books and join me on patreon.com slash jim rug red room trigger warnings issue one two and three are in stores uh, as we speak murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game in red room comics banned in 28 countries banned in 10 comic shops but you can order these comics at my link tree in the description below this video uh you can also hit up my uh patreon and read the comics uh, right now today three bucks gets you the archive there more than 200 pages are live as we speak i put new strips up every tuesday what do you have out there tom Check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, American Barbarian. Uh, Go to my Patreon and check out my uh, YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. What other Cartoonist Kayfabe swag is out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. It's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.